All right, here's the deal. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about the one punch man workout. I'm gonna talk to you about what it is, and then we're gonna decide whether or not it is effective, like if it's a good workout program to follow. So stay tuned because you don't wanna miss this. And along the way, we're gonna give you some fitness tips that are gonna help you as well. And we're gonna use the one punch man workout as a teaching tool. So how this came about is people online started calling me the one punch man. They started saying that I worked out so hard I lost my hair, which coincidentally in the anime cartoon, it happens to the main hero. Now, the one punch man workout itself, I looked into it. It's 100 push-ups, it's 100 squats, it's 100 sit-ups, and a 10K run. Now, the character in the show does this every single day for three years. And it's so simple, and it works so well. Like I said, he got so strong that he lost all his hair like me. Hence why people call me the one punch man. It worked so well that people didn't believe it could be that simple. Now, I've seen some people uh, like Athlean X, Jeff Cavalier, say that it's going to ruin your gains. I've seen some people try this for 100 days, 75 days, 200 days. People seem to have a mixed uh, reaction to this workout. But I'm just going to say flat out, that if you were able to do this, if you had that kind of discipline, if you had that kind of motivation, if you had that kind of tenacity, this would 100% improve your fitness. Like 100%. Now, where it could ruin your gains, if you're a pro level bodybuilder, if you're a pro strongman, then yeah, okay, your, your deadlift would go down, right? But we're talking like the tip of the spear right now. We're talking people in a specialized sport. But for general conditioning and even something that I was involved in, mixed martial arts, I think this would be a tremendous program. If you did this, if you were able to do this, like I said, you had that kind of discipline where you could do the one punch man workout for three straight years, you would be in way, way, way better shape than you are now. There's absolutely no question. So let's look at kind of what this entails and why. The number one predictor of if a person is going to be fit or not, well, there are two. There's volume and there's intensity, and they both matter. Volume is how much work you're doing. How much are you willing to work out every single day, day after day after day after day? There's a guy, Steven Seiler, did a research report, and he cataloged how, how many hours elite athletes train. And, and some of the elite long distance runners were training 550 hours a year. They were on the low end. On the high end, you had swimmers that were training 1,400 hours a year. 1,400 hours a year is like 25 to 28 hours a week. 550 for the distance runners, even on the low end, you're looking at 10 to 12 hours a week without a week off. Like that's what it takes to be an elite athlete. If you're, you're not training at a minimum of 10 hours, you're not gonna get that. So just, just hold that thought for a minute, but that's the first thing. The second thing is intensity. If you wanna get more fit, you've gotta go hard. We all know the story, and I was talking about this earlier in one of my lives. We all know the story of that guy. He's 50 years old. He shows up to the gym every day. He's on the same elliptical trainer, the same treadmill, going the same speed. He does the same weight routine. It's always chest on Monday, back on shoulders, legs on Wednesday. He always like puts the pin in the machine and it's always number five or number six. He never goes to seven, never goes to eight, never makes himself uncomfortable and he completely plateaus. So there's an intensity component too. Despite the fact that I just talked to you about volume being a predictor of success, you can mitigate volume if you're willing to go hard. Intensity is the inverse of duration. So when, when people tell you you can get fit on 20 minutes a day, I mean, technically they're right. The problem is most people aren't willing to work that hard in 20 minutes to make that 20 minutes count. So now back to this one punch man workout. A reasonable 10K for a person is 50 minutes. So if you're gonna run a 10K every day, you're looking at a minimum of 50 minutes. Now, are there people, world-class people that do it in 30 minutes? Yes. Are there people that do it in 40 minutes, 41 minutes, 42 minutes? In fact, five of my clients can do a sub 52K. They hover in around the 45 minute range. My lifetime PR when I was running all the time. And coincidentally, when I was in the UFC, I was running 10K a day and I could do it in 45 minutes. 
So it's not that much to ask. You just get used to running it. So I guess I kind of am the one punch man when I think about it because I did do a lot of running and I did a lot of body weight exercises, okay? So here's the deal. It's going to take you 50 minutes to do that 10K run. Uh, if you're an absolute beginner to go 10K, and I don't know if I would recommend going 10K to start, you might have to scale it. You might have to start 5K, but like if you're an absolute beginner, 10K might take you an hour and a half. So like you're you're investing some time here, right? Now, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100, 100 squats. Again, if you're like me and you, you can bang out push-ups in, in, in three sets of 35 reps, then it's not going to take you long at all. You could drop and do 35 push-ups, 35 squats, 35 sit-ups, three rounds. Like this might take you five, 10 minutes. If you're an absolute beginner, man, you could be there for hours. So the, the whole theory is if you went from zero to 100, like if you had the capacity mentally and physically to start from day one doing this one punch man workout, you might be looking at a three hour workout. You might be looking at a two and a half hour workout. And if you did that for three straight months, you would be a radically, radically different human being. No one can really argue that. So when people are out here, like Jeff Cavalier saying, oh, it's gonna ruin your gains. That's just not, not true. Maybe for a certain percentage of the population, but for your average human, they would get insanely fit, all right? Now, once you get good at the one punch man workout, Man, I would expect you like after, after uh, maybe not even three months, maybe six months, maybe a year, you should be able to do a 50K, not a 50K, a 10K in under 50 minutes. You should be able to do your push-ups, your squats, and your sit-ups in under 10 minutes. Now you're looking at an hour a day and you just go hard. And there's no real way to shave time off it after that. Like maybe you get your 10K down to 40 minutes, maybe, right? But then you still got your push-ups, your body weight exercises. So you're still looking at like a 50 minute workout. So, so you're probably never gonna be working out less than 50 minutes, man. If you were able to work out 50 minutes a day for three full years, you would be way more fit than you are now. Now, when I look at, look at the program itself, like is it lacking some kind of pulling or some type of overhead work? Like sure, so, so maybe you'd be in danger of developing some type of like minor imbalance. Is it hamstring dominant? No, I'd wanna see some more hamstring dominant stuff. Like I'm not saying it's the most robust program and I'm not saying it's the greatest thing in the world for strength and conditioning. But what I am saying is there are a lot of obese people there are a lot of people that work out once a week, maybe. There are a lot of dudes out there walking around with dad bods, 30 pound guts that are hanging over their belt. They have no business wanting to be concerned with, oh, are my hamstrings in balance with my quads? Or, or did I get enough pulling to balance out my pushing or an imbalance? Like, you know why you're imbalanced? Because you have a 30 or 40 pound gut, because you have no energy, because you have no sex drive. Like, let's fix that stuff first. People have a tendency to make stuff so complicated. And it kind of echoes it in the show, right? Like this workout program is so simple. People don't believe it can work. But that's like really all it takes. Simple is almost always better. You know, I built my platform on being the real one in the fitness industry. I could sell you in all kinds of convoluted programs. I could sell you in all kinds of nonsense. But at the end of the day, I believe the basics work best, even with my online training. I don't use a lot of movements. Like I, I, I put it together with maybe 40 movements max, maybe 50 movements max. My, my best-selling book, Maximus Body for Men's Health, had 52 different exercises in it. That's it. Now, there are 100 different workouts, but there are 52 base movements. Like you could probably carve that down to 25 base movements and you'd never need to do another exercise. But that's not how the training industry works. People need to make stuff complicated. They need to sell a new program. They need to say the latest, greatest thing. And I'm just not about that. I'm about giving you real world fitness advice for real people. I've never done testosterone, never done TRT. I, I wasn't genetically gifted. Everything I've done has been built from the ground up. So I'm just giving you real advice. And, and, and again, when I look at something like the One Punch Man workout, like sure, are there gonna be some imbalances develop over time? Well, well, sure, but like you're not even at the point if you're watching this where you're even worried or you should be worried about developing imbalances. Like the first thing you need to do is develop yourself a base of fitness. You're worried about sprinting when you can't run and you can't even walk, you're still crawling. Like let's get through the crawling phase first. And the worst part about men, and, and men are the worst for this. Every dude out there thinks three things, that they can fight, 
I mean, have you seen the polls on this? Like the, the, the percentage of grown men that think they can beat a bear or a lion in a fight is shocking. They all think they can fight. They all watch a UFC and like, oh, I would have done this. No, you wouldn't have. Get Sit back down in your couch. They all think they're fit and can work out. And they all think they can fix stuff. And there's no shortage of guys who tried to fix stuff themselves and flooded their house out or, or, or burnt it down because they don't know how to do electricity. It's the same with fitness. It's always the guy with the gut hanging over his belt with a burger in one hand and a soda in the other that thinks he knows about fitness. And so again, this one punch man workout, it's super simple, but that's why it would work. Like if you did this every single day and you were a person that got to the point where you could do a hundred straight pushups, a hundred straight squats, a hundred straight sit-ups, and then get up and run a 10K in 45 minutes, you would be one of the most fit people on the planet. Like absolutely no doubt about it. You combine that with a good diet and some good sleep habits, which you would develop if you were doing all this work, you would be incredibly fit. And I'm sick of these people with their little six pack abs and their shredded chest and everything. And like, that's me too. But these people that, that they talk about how fit they are and how this program wouldn't work and you have to do something complex, but they're not fit themselves. Like my question is, what's your 40 time? Like when you see any of these fitness influencers, what's your 40 time? What's your vertical leap? Can you do Nordic curls? How many times can you bench press 225? What's your max deadlift? What's your max squat? What's your 2000 meter row for time? What's your 500 meter skier for time? Like I wanna see some numbers because you're talking about fitness and you look great with your shirt off, but like what can you actually do? And here's the beauty about fitness. The numbers don't lie. When you see your favorite fitness influencer and he's using fake plates, or he won't post what he can actually lift or run or do on a rower, a ski or a Peloton, or, or like, like your Garmin chip, right, from, uh, from running, it's because they can't do anything. Like if they were good at something, they would post it. So that's what I want to see. You're going to talk to me about fitness, real fitness now. I want numbers to back it up. I want to see what you can do. Because otherwise, I don't want to listen to you. If you got a 20-inch vertical, you can barely jump on a bench. You, you can barely deadlift 225, and you, you can't bench press your body weight for 10. Like, I don't want to listen to you, frankly. So back to this one-punch man workout. Like I said, if you're, if, you're, if you're wondering how you can get fit, start it. Do it for three straight years. You could do that. You will have no problem with fitness. And the beauty of it is you would build such a base of fitness and build such a curiosity. You'd start to ask yourself questions along the way and you'd probably start to like try to round out your program a little more. Now, one more thing for the beginners. If you're trying this, I don't know if I would do this right away. Maybe I would start with week one, 25 push-ups, 25 squats, 25 sit. Now there's people that can't even do that. But if you could do 25 of each and then I would do Let's do a 3K run. Let's do that for month one. Month two, let's do 50, 50, 50, and 6K. Month three, let's do 50, 50, 50, and 8K. Month four, let's do 75, 75, 75, and 8K again. And then let's do month six, 100, 100, 100. 10K, and then you are on your way. You've got a great training program, and you are absolutely crushing it. So to answer the question, does Bobby Maximus, the real-life one-punch man, like the one-punch man workout? You're damn right I do.